Hi everyone, welcome to the QYOX channel. I'm Rafael Lima and today we're going to be finalizing porting our, all of our Cucumber tests into uh, JUnit 5. Uh, the, the only one that is missing is the scenario outline table and how can we do that on JUnit 5. It, it's, it used not to be possible on JUnit 4, but on 5 we can definitely have the same test just changing the data if you would like. Right, so if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive the notifications of my next videos. And I'm also going to be posting the links for the previous one, which is important that you follow up because you can you can exercise, you can understand how how we achieved or how we got here. Right. So let's start. So we have our test here. Uh, we already did a bunch of our, our, our porting. The only one missing is the pet one. So this is the one that is missing. We this is the outline. The rest of the test, the, the, the other test, this is the only one we're going to be doing. The other ones is basically uh, when I sh showed you that you can have the same test being created, it just changing the data, which is the scenario outline. In this case, this test is executing three times, one, two, and three, uh, just changing the data, right? We just need to take a look at the data. And th that's the only thing that's changing. And this is what we need to do, right? So so if, it, if we, we take a look what we need to do, we need to create a class test, right? So we need to create the pet tests class. This one is going to extend from base test so we can get the rest assured configuration. And now we can start creating our test. Right. So um, the first thing, first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to create a nested class. Right. So we, we already saw in this in, in the previous video and I'm going to post the links for the previous one. So uh, you understand why we have nest, nest, nested, uh, this nested annotation. But in a nutshell, it's just uh, how we can separate the scope of our tests. I'm going to also to give a display name and I'm going to call it list pets. And this is going to be a class list pets. So now what I what I need to do, I need to delete the pet sold, right? So this is the one that is deleting the pet sold. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a test. I'm going to say void test void uh, list all pets except on sold state. And the first thing that we did, we do is delete the sold test. Right, so we need to pass the variable sold and I need to create this object here. So we do pet API, pet API, it's a new pet API. Awesome. So now we need to do the action, right? So when I search for all pets, when I search for all pets, I'm going to change this a little bit, right? So I don't, this one is returning me the, 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 sorry, this one is returning me the object. I want the response. So I'm going to change by status, set of by status by, response by status, get pets response by status. Here's going to be response, it's going to be actual pets response. And this status is the key of what we are doing, right? So when I take a look here, uh, I, I need this, this key to be status available Pending and plus sending the data so I can check that out. So what we can do here is if we go to the documentation of um, 
JUnit 5, there is this parameterized tests, right? And the first thing we need to do is implement to use these, right? Um, get the dependencies. So let me go ahead and put the dependencies here. So the dependency that we're going to be using is this one. It's ju Jupyter params, right? So for the parameterized test. It has a specific annotation. You can see that you have value sources and you can pass a list of strings. Uh, you have multiple values here. You can pass short, byte, int, long, string. You also have a CSV source that you can define a CSV here, which is a, com a comma separated value. So, and this is going to be sent as two params. And you, you can also pass a CSV file itself. If you have too many values, you, it's just easier to have a CSV file, right? So, Now, my test cannot be a test anymore. My test is a parameterized, parameterized test, right? And now I can pass on the value. So I can, I have value source and I could say, I have a list of strings. I have a list of ints, right? So, and I can pass on this value, but this is not what I want. I want a CSV value because this CSV is the one that's going to enable me to have uh, two parameters or more in a single uh, a single test, right? So I'm going to put curly brackets and I'm going to give it an enter. So it's going to be pretty. What we want is we want the available seven pending two sold zero. So it's available, available seven comma pending two comma so zero and i'm going to give a couple of tabs so it's going to be on a on the same column which is nicer and now i need to say the name of this parameter and this parameter so this one the first one is going to be status and the second one is going to be uh i can call a string quantity right since this is a string i can receive this as a string but this is a string, but it's actually an integer, right? So I can put int here, and the test itself is going to cast, transform that into an integer, which is better because this is what actually it is, right? So now I'm already using the status here. It's going to loop these three times. Now I need to check my, uh, I need to do my, my assertion. So this one is not the one that I wanted because this one is actually getting checking the object. I want to do a little bit more. And this, the one that we do a little bit more is this one here, which is the one that we are actually checking the response, which is this one. So now I can copy here. Great. The name of this is actual pets. Oh, I don't need this. Cool. So here is quantity. And here is quantity as well. Quantity. Let me fix the identification here. Awesome. I can run this now. Command Control Shift R. And it's going to execute, and you can see that it executed three times. So let let me remove my face, so we can see it. It executed three times here, right? One, two, and three. So does this actually work? Let's change this to two. So it should pass one and fail two. So it passed one and fail two. If I check here, it's actually going to be yeah, it failed because you he was expecting two, but it was actually seven. So let's go back here to what it was, make it work again. Great. 
So one thing that we could do is this could be the setup, right? This could be the setup of my test. And I can, I can create a setup for this. So let me create a setup. And I'm going, going to put up here. And I'm going to say before each, before each void setup. Before each, because I want this to be executed before each test. Right? And I also need this because this is on the scope of this class. But now I put it there in the in the outer class. So I need to make sure it's there as well. So now I can re-execute everything. Everything's going to run. The thing is, this setup is specifically for the sold status. So I'm I'm deleting the sold status. The problem here is that. If I do that, all of my below tests is going to have issues with my sold. So it's, it's not going to have the sold items anymore, right? Each and every one of those is going to be deleted. And that's a problem because uh, I don't want that, right? I want my specific test that does not need sold to delete the sold. So what I can do is I can put this below here. It's set up of my specific listing scenario you're going to see that this is still working because these definitions is on the outer class so it's going to be available for the outer class and for the inner classes awesome this is still does not make sense because this is a class for listing pets so all my tests related to listing a pet is here so each test of mine that's going to delete the sold uh each test of mine here is going to delete the sold and I don't want that. I just want this test specifically because this setup is only for this test. But then you have a bunch of flexibility of how you want to do the setup since you have nested classes. Right? Cool. Uh, so you can see that the purpose of this, let me delete Cucumber. We don't need the Cucumber anymore. We don't need this. We don't need this. We don't need the steps. And we don't need the dependencies of Cucumber anymore either. Right, so I can come here on my test run, and it's going to run all of my scenarios. Great, including uh, the triple one, the triple one that we already had. Right. So, <laughs> what I wanted to sh why I wanted to show you this is because you can if if it does not make sense for you to use Cucumber BDD because you are not that close with the business. It's it's your you and your own team. Uh, you still can write great code, leisure, uh, readable code, clean code. If you uh, think about your architecture, think about your test naming convention. So you can see that's pretty readable, right? So I have a test that's parameterized. These are my sources. My name, the, the name of my test list, all pets except on sold state. Uh, I do have my setup of deleting the pets. Then I go do I do my action, which is getting the status. Then I do a search on my status. The status code needs to be okay. In the body, the size is the same as the quantity. And I do a find all on each item that has the same status that I'm looking for. And I make sure that the size is the same as that I'm looking for, right? And the reason that I do this, this too, is because this is only checking the all the results, but it's not checking uh, the status of each and every one of those items. So if I search for available, I need to have only available being returned. I cannot have available and pending, right? So this one is make sure that we have a seven items being returned in the case of the available, but we also make sure that all all of those seven have the status available, which is very important. So this is what I want to show you. Uh, if you like it, give the thumbs up, and it's really important that you do because that's how the channel can keep growing. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive the notifications of my next videos. 
and I see you on the next video.